<laughs> he must be planning something big. <laughs> He's like, I heard someone flooded the bathroom when I was gone. I'm going to have to step up my game. <laughs> He's like, hmm, I wonder if the baptistry can work as a waterfall. <laughs> he got to go swimming. <laughs> Good thing we got that lock up high. Oh, man. Yeah. It's so funny. Have you, when, when, when we have had the, some of the baptisms, it is funny because I'll notice it every now and then because Ann, you know, wants to make sure he's in here to see the baptism. But if he, if, if he sees somebody up there, he thinks that somebody's getting in the pool. And so he will do one of his like sprints down the aisle because he wants to come. <laughs> <laughs> Make a good size mess too. Jackie said it sounds good. Right. I think there was a preacher that was going to baptize his son. <clears throat> and they, they were taking a video of it because it's his, his only son. And the preacher's in the, in the baptistry waiting for his son to come in. And his son comes in and does a cannonball. <laughs> 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 Can we pray before? <laughs> Cannonball. <laughs> I guess that's okay. I don't know. <laughs> you gonna? Are you gonna read from Psalm ninety-one? Yeah. yeah. How'd you know? Part, you of, my part of my job. Did you read my note? You looked at my note. What was that? Yeah. Oh, and look I was at looking at Robert's nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Could've well, you know when when could have been could have been looking at my notes too. Well, yeah. It's kind of like you know when when God gives you a carrot, yeah. you take it. You take it. <laughs> Far be it from us to use scripture. That's, that's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey. You know. <laughs> Like, hey, you might want to look over here. <laughs> might want to look at this. <laughs> but you know they use this scripture. Mm -hmm. It is. It is about Jesus. It's a prophecy about Jesus. It is. But also, it's a prophecy about the children. And who are the children? Who are the children? And that's a big. That's a big promotion. What is? Did you receive? People take it for granted. They shouldn't. No, sir. They shouldn't. <coughs> Do -do -do. Since you're going to go there. You, you don't want me to read that now. No, I'll go to the next I one. I was going to read it. I'll go to Matthew 18. Yeah, I got that one too. 1810. You know, I think in about 1810. 15 years, 20 years. That cobweb might be down here far enough where we could grab just it and cut it off. No, I figure what will happen is I'll be up here preaching one day, yeah, and it will fall, and everyone will see it and not say anything. <laughs> and then it will just land on me, and right you'll there. see me do the Holy Spirit dance. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll write it down. And a web from the ceiling yeah. fell upon his head. In his head. <laughs> in the end is revelation. The Holy Spirit came upon him, and he in began to utter breath. speech that <laughs> tongues have not ceased. <laughs> okay. It's eight o'clock. <laughs> Heard the tongues of fire, but he's tongues of fire. Is that, let that, this not be the web of deceit. <laughs> it didn't come down as a dove, it came down as a spider web. <laughs> Oh. Save us quick. <laughs> it is. All right, let's get started. <laughs> it is 8 o'clock. Thanks for uh, for joining us. Uh, Bob, we saw you came on. Thanks for being here, buddy. Uh, we appreciate everyone that's uh, uh, watching us either now uh, or uh, throughout the week as you just have time. We're going to go ahead and continue uh, our study on angels today. Though we're going to kind of hit on the, the topic of guardian angels. And, and even though it's something that people think that it's just a big subject and people talk about it a lot and they talk about it with children they talk about it when you know when when maybe people are spared in their life they even go on to say that when people you know they pass on they're, they're my guardian angel now so even though it's a, a discussion in a lot of different areas in life the bible really does not address it too much 
that. And um, but we're going to hit that topic and then you know, kind of just continue on with the angels today and see if we wrap it up. And if we don't, we'll just keep carrying on uh, in the conversation because, again, I think it's it's something that we just. As, as, as much as it's written about in scripture, it's still one of those things that we just can't wrap our heads around sometime. And I think it's a, a fault to try to maybe wrap your head around it sometimes, to become an expert on it. You know, so far, you know, these so called scholars, experts in New Testament history and Old Testament history and, and scholar experts on, you know, angelic and de- uh, demonic things. And I think sometimes we need to be careful because. We need to really understand that, like we were talking about this morning, First Peter tells us God has given us everything for life and godliness, but he hasn't given us everything. He's just basically said, I'm going to give you what you need to get through this physical world to get to glory. Right. Once you're there, man, then your eyes are going to be opened. Right. But I'm going to give you enough to get you through. And I think sometimes we just need to take into consideration the fact that we don't know everything. And, and then humble ourselves to the point that, well, one, I'm going to learn more, but um, I'm fine with what we have. I you think know. sometimes we have a tendency to, to, to read in to Scripture things that aren't there. Yeah. And, and we try to speculate uh, on what God might have said. That he was vague when it comes to angels, and, and I think vague to a point of, it's it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Quit making it a huge deal. Again, and, and I think sometimes we do. Yeah, you're right. I mean, are, are we going are we going to receive salvation because of an angel? No. No. You know, I think um, angels can definitely I think if you examine your life and look back, I think there may be times that you'll say to yourself, "I wonder if right. that was an encounter True. that was with an angel." And and you know, I was having a conversation with Bob Duncan yesterday. There are some things that just happen in our lives that, we, man, you can't explain. Exactly. You cannot explain it. And so at some point you just have to say, that's, that's God interceding. Maybe he sent an angel. Maybe it was an angel. Maybe, but it could have been. You know, the Hebrew says we entertain them, and we don't even know it. That's right. Um, but um, I, I think that the, they're not something to be worshipped. Right. Mm. I think one of the writers, and, and it's just just a guy that was was writing about angels. He said, "Look, James, anybody lacks wisdom? Did he, did did God have Scripture say ask an angel? No, no. He said anybody lacks wisdom, ask God. And and that's that <clears throat> basically is the bottom line that you need to understand about angels. Yeah, they're they're a created being just as we are. So, right. So, you know, we're not to worship." the creation rather the creator yeah. and right. you know some people get you know the things that you don't really know that much about you you know you start to to kind of like you said ad lib or put something in there that makes sense to you so that way um you know it's not such a big question you know i think yeah. that's what and and the, the whole idea of angels and the realm that they're in and all that is brings up a lot of things and of course it's there and we do, you know, it says that, you know, our battles isn't against flesh and blood, you know, but against the, you know, rulers and principalities and, and things like that. So, mm. you know, it's something that we can't totally abandon the thought of. However, like you had said before, too, that, you know, it's not something that, that we have to particularly uh, address in that realm. You know, if, if we do what we're supposed to do according to the word here, that other takes care of itself. Yeah. Like I said, you know, who knows what's in store for us there? It wouldn't be a mystery if he told us everything. Yeah. Well, you know, Jackie, Jackie had Jackie sent me a text, Deuteronomy 29, 29, That's which the is, crayon, which is, the, yeah, which yeah. is, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, things are, are for you and your children and all that, and they'll be revealed to you when it's time. But the right. secret things belong to the Lord. Stop trying to, stop trying to be the Lord. Let, let God be God. Let Jesus be Jesus. Yeah, you right. just, you just <laughs> shut up and color. Yeah. <laughs> Underneath the tree, grabbing the present, shaking it. Yeah, what it is. Yeah. Quit it. <laughs> yeah. We try to make it bigger than what it really is. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's that's a fallacy that mankind does. They, they, they try to worship things that they shouldn't even worship. They're, they're created things, like you said, Mike. And, uh, God didn't intend for us to do that. And he told us that. You don't worship things that I 
created birds and animals and stars. And the angels are the same thing. You don't worship them. And in fact, it says that we're going to be judges of the angels and when we get uh, into, into heaven. I mean, even the angel in, in Revelation with John. Yes. John fell down to, to worship him. He said, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, don't be doing that. Stand up there, buddy. That's it. Get off that feet. Yeah. I want there to be eyeballs watching thinking, I put you up to this. That's, yeah. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good introduction. Okay. See, Cliff, see what happens when you come. Yeah. Conversation. So that's that's conversation happens. Well, I was yeah. waiting for him to be up here so we could have some of these uh, Cliff notes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> I, I can see Jackie's eyes rolling from here. She did that with the uh, web of deceit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lonnie, uh, why don't you uh, just say a quick prayer and then go ahead and, and uh, start us off with the scripture there by you, okay? Father, we thank you so very much for all that you do for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your words that you've given us through the Holy Spirit. As we go through this and discuss the things that we want to do this morning, give us insight, give us understanding and wisdom that comes from you. Bless our congregation here and bless the congregation of the world over. Bless our, minister, our missionaries and bless our nation. Forgive us for our sins and be with us always, Father. Thank you again for all that you do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray to you, saints. Amen. Amen. Well, we all... We all had the same scripture that we were going to talk about uh, <laughs> in Psalms 91. If you want to turn to Psalms 91, uh, I'll read it uh, if you bear with me in my poor reading. Uh, God gave through the Holy Spirit, through, da through David, the ability to give some prophecy. And this is a prophecy here. But also in this prophecy, there's something that, it, it, it concerns Jesus, our Lord, and it concerns us, uh, his children. So you think about this, we're not only Christians, we're also God's children. He says that so. And he says that it, 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 he's given us all these gifts. So I'll give you this, this reading and then we'll, we'll discuss it if y'all if want to. Psalms 91, beginning with the first verse. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the, uh, of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fort fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the ready, deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overcome you, overtake you. No disaster will come near you, your tent. <clears throat> For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you with all your way, uh, in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, part about 
I lift him up when he won't uh, step on a stone, stumble on a stone, or hurt his foot on a stone. Uh, it was uh, a reference about Jesus. And this same scripture was quoted by Satan to Jesus when he tried to tempt him. But also, if you read this, you look at the context, it's it also talking about us. If we make God his, his re our refuge. <laughs> um, and that's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that wraps up our study on angels. That's it. <laughs> so. Okay, so so there's there's Old Testament, right? And, and angels were were in the Old Testament mentioned quite a bit, but we have this idea of guardian angel and, and protection, right? This is the idea that they are here for protection. Right. Um, let's go ahead and look at what. Um, the Matthew records uh, when talking about uh, kind of the, the same idea of guardian angels because this is a popular verse that people go to and that's in Matthew chapter 18 and here Jesus is talking about children he's, you know he's 18, 18, right? and so he's talking about children and says don't you don't want to cause these ones to stumble right you know because there's the idea that these children are innocent when they when they are first born we talked about this this morning children just have faith they grow up and they're innocent they don't have sin they don't know what right and wrong is you know even looking in today we talk about um all the problems that, that exist in the world today and we're trying to to teach our children at an early age about equality and things of that nature. Children only know equality right. when they're young. That's right. What we're seeing is you're just indoctrinating them earlier to a belief system, uh, hoping they'll go down this way instead of another way because it opposes what you think or what they want right. you to think. Yeah. Children are not born uh, with the, the, the idea that I'm going to be evil or I'm going to make bad decisions and things like that. Um, here, Jesus is saying, don't corrupt these little ones. Right. You know, you yeah. instead, right, you need to become like them. Right. Yeah. We talked about the, the, the black and the white, the right and the wrong. They don't have this gray area. We, we pick that up the older we get in which we start making excuses to do things that would, to a kid would be like, well, no, that's not nice. <laughs> you don't right. do that. Kids, the kids are very honest about it, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. They're just brutally honest. I remember, um, uh, you know, and, and I always know that. You know, I know that kids repeat things, but I remember there was one time, uh, Ann's mom and uh, her fa uh, stepdad were were visiting with us, and you know when when Ann's mom comes, she will sometimes come to church with us. But when you know Larry comes, she, they just won't come, you know, because he's got a position in that ward up there. Right. And so anyway, they said they were going to try to come, so we're waiting in the car or something like that, and, and you know Lena. Comes, comes in and, and she's like, oh, where's grandma and grandpa? And I said, I said, baby, they're, you know, they're, we're waiting on them to see if they're going to come. And, you know, they're not coming. And, and, and so Aline's like, well, they said they were going to come. I was like, yeah, well, they say a lot of things they don't mean. <laughs> Her mom comes out. Larry wasn't feeling good. So he stay home, and he ended up having to have a surgery. He had to go home to have surgery. And he was—it was legitimate. He was yeah, not feeling really good. Really good. <laughs> he, had, he had kidney stones, man. And, and so it was. And so anyway, she comes in here, and, and she's like, "I'm sorry, I'm late." And, and then Aline's like, "What Daddy said," <laughs> you know. And so and I owned it because again, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, I shouldn't have said it. Right. You know, right. and kids know, man, there's just, you know, yeah. you be, be nice. I love, you know, I love, you know, we're talking about uh, Jaylee and yeah. Hannah. And, you know, if, if something's wrong, that's not nice. You need to say you're sorry. Or Alex says, apologize now. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. Last night, something happened. He's like, you need to apologize. They just see this, you know, but right. Christ is saying, don't, don't muddy the water here. Right. It's going to get muddy the older they get, but try to be like them. Anyway, he goes on verse 10. He says, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven, for the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. So people look at this verse and they say, okay, well, he's saying that children have angels that are looking over them. Right. 
Is it is it theologically sound? Is it scripturally sound to argue against that teaching, or or is it should we be teaching for that standpoint? Where where do we stand? Well, if it wasn't so, Jesus wouldn't have said it. That's yeah. right. And it's it's it was it was more. I I think in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, for for lack of a better phrase to put there. What's special about these angels? Number one, they, they watch over the kids. Yeah. Number two, they have an audience with God. Yes. So you better heed what I'm saying. Their angels watch over them, have an audience with God. Now, how powerful is that statement? That statement's powerful. It's pretty powerful. How many times did God use angels in the Old Testament to go down to talk to people. How many times in the New Testament did God use angels to do his bidding? God was doing that. How much more so will he do that with the little ones? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, even, it's even referenced in scripture that, that to, to cause one of these little ones to stumble, it's better to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast it to a lake. Yep. Man. I mean, those are, those are vivid word pictures yeah. of the way that God sees this. Yeah. And I think God wrote that, had the Holy Spirit inspire Matthew to write mm -hmm. that for a particular reason. And I, and I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I think it, it would be irresponsible right. to teach that there's not angels looking out. I think where, the, where we have to look, look at it is, okay, what is the role right. of the guardian angel? Because there's this idea that because, because it says that um, you know, the, the, their angels always see the face. It talks about their angels and this idea that there's this guardian. They're not there to protect little ones. If that were the case, you would never see little ones suffer. You'd never right. see little ones die. It's this idea that the, the guardian, I think, is more an aspect to the guardian of their innocence, the guardian of that faith, because that's why they have that that face of God. That's why God is calling them there, because they, they're, they're innocent, they're pure. You know, so it's that point, and that's where, as, as Christians, our whole goal, mm -hmm. even though we continue to mature in faith, even though we continue to grow, the goal that we have is to say, man, I can't wait until I'm at that point where I have the faith of my youth, <laughs> when, when there were no questions, when there was no doubt, when I wasn't being influenced by all the people around me, when I just went to church because I wanted to, to read and have Bible stories, and, and I just wanted to be close to my friends, and nothing about church is is jaded when you're a kid right it is the kingdom of heaven it is what what glory is going to be like when we're just together with friends and fellowshipping and worshiping and and so the, the idea that the, the angels uh, are, are watching over these kids I think what if I'm going to interpret it the way that I see it is that Angels are theirs to almost give an, an account of, right? Right, an account of, and, and and so whenever we act, whenever you know, if I'm going to do something that harms a little kid, you know, the kid hasn't come into into new birth yet, right? The kid has not come into new birth yet. They do not know what sin. They don't know what the sacrifice is yet. They're being if they're if they're being tainted by something. I think the angels, if I'm going to, and, and please, this is one that, this is where the debate's going to kick in. And if you're watching online, please do this because, again, First Peter, I don't know everything. This is something that's just going to be revealed. But, but I look at it this way. When I'm baptized, when I come to the conclusion that I need Jesus in my life because I know what right and wrong is, I know with wrong that separates me from, from God, I make that choice. I am the guardian of my soul at that point. Okay? I answer for my soul at that point but before that comes and children are being abused and children are being thing put into their heads and they're being sent down a path of of negativity and abuse and and, and depression and despair i i look at this and i see that the angels are there almost to kind of be their answer god this isn't this little ch child that's doing this so he's saying don't you dare do something to these little children because their angels are here watching with them. And so the angels are, almost, I, I look at that as being almost, even though Christ is the answer, I see the angels as almost being like a witness, you know, giving it, you know, and say, well, 
it, they're just a child. Now, I could be completely wrong there, and, and I'm not claiming to know all the answers, but... No, I think you've, you've got to go back to the very beginning. Let me, let me read Matthew 18, starting at, at verse 1. It says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and said, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called the child to himself and set him before them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, which is what we were talking about, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a definitive statement. It's a definitive yeah. word. It's not. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Mm-hmm. Pretty strong. It is. It's, it's, it's very strong. And <clears throat> it's, in other words, you, you deserve death. You're, you're going to have to stand if, if you do these things. Uh, what, what God warns you against, if you do these things, you have to stand before God. It doesn't say that God's going to prevent the children from stumbling. Right. It doesn't say that God's going to prevent these little ones from the things that happen to them in their lives. Yeah. It tells you specifically what's going to happen if you are the catalyst or the cause because of yeah. those yeah. things. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> Thinking about this a minute, uh, just a little rabbit trail to the side. In, uh, in John, <clears throat> the 14th chapter, uh, Philip is asking the Lord, show us the, show us the Father. And then Jesus said, have you understand all this time I've been with you? You've, had, you've seen the Father. Yeah. I speak, the words I speak are the Father's words. So with that in mind, think about this a minute. When Jesus said, the angels report to me, report to God. God is telling you through Jesus, I sent those angels down there and they're watching over those children and they report to me. Mm-hmm. So watch what you do around those children. So, I mean, this is, this is really strong. And then when we talked about it over in, in Psalms 91, we do have angels watching over us. It's not, you're not, we may be involved in an accident, you know, a car wreck, heaven forbid, but God is watching over you in that car wreck. You may get hurt, and you may die. You know, but still, God is still watching over you. You still have that ministering angel. What if, what if you had that car wreck and you didn't have this? You didn't have that guardian angel, so to speak. What if you didn't have that? I think, I think sometimes we, we look in this life as, as this is the end all, but it's not. It's not. Our, our goal. It's a, it's a beginning. Our, exact, our goal, our destination is heaven. Yes. That's where we want to go. God giving us what we need for life and godliness is the preparation to get us there. That's right. Mm-hmm. So Jackie asked a question. She says, so what I'm hearing is that there are levels of sin. To abuse a child is worse than anything. The little ones represent Christians, right? Uh, levels of sin. I, first I thing that popped into my head is, <laughs> is <laughs> Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. And, and it uh, goes to uh, verse 26. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment. Hmm. Mm, that's a vivid picture. Yeah. And the fury of fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three or two or three witnesses. How much more severer punishment? Hmm. That implies levels, I think. I don't know. I might be reading something into it. Uh, do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he is sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace. So do I think there are levels? Yes, I do. Um, do I think Christ meant what Christ said in Matthew? Yes, I do. Yes. 
Well, six things God hates, yet seven sure. are of an abomination. Exactly. I, so, sin, sin, is, a sin is to miss the mark. Right. It's to miss the mark. Well, now, I, now yeah. uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. when you're talking about sin, mm -hmm. murder is a sin, lying is a sin. Right. You know. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. It, it, it derbies. It's that little bit of mud that muddies the, 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 the you know, causes the water to be. Right. But there's things that, I mean, God hates. says that these things God hates. Right. And he mentions it, you know. Lying tongues, those you know, these are things that God hates. It says, but seven are an abomination. So there's there's meaning that those God hates these, and He more than the rest, He hates these. But there's also right. these other ones that are still an abomination. Right. Don't think that just because these are the ones that are mentioned yeah. that God doesn't just you know He doesn't approve of all all this other stuff. Right. It's the idea that no, we have to understand that sin is sin. It's always causing right. the Mr. So all sin is an abomination. Right. You know, but I think when we're getting back to this, uh, Jackie texts me, says, I mean, that angels fail when, and, and I, and again, I, I don't necessarily think that this passage is meaning that the angels fail, because I think you hit the nail on the head in that second part to Robert, because in this particular verse in Matthew 18, you have to keep reading because where Jesus is going this, he's talking about the, the lost sheep. He's right. talking about new babes in Christ. Right. He's talking about these things, and he's using the children as an example. Right. You know, um, seeking when and save that right. which was you seek and save which was lost. Right. right. It's this idea that that every soul is precious. Right. And when we are new to Christ, but how many times when we, when we baptize people do we say we have to hit the ground running right. because Satan is going to do everything he can right. to send every possible distraction their way you know we, we have the conversation at uh, breakfast the other day you know how many people when they're baptized fall off the wagon almost immediately because their expectation was that i'm gonna i'm gonna put on christ and all my problems are gonna go away right but they wake up the next day to realize that they still have anxiety they still have bills to pay they still have a family to feed they still have all the problems that are there and so they think that there were supposed to be some great healing that I got baptized and angels are going to be watching over me now and and that's not necessarily what he's talking about what he's talking about is again the sincerity of the heart the innocence of the heart right and we have to get people back to that stage of innocence when we're baptized in Christ we are washed clean like little children right. and now it's up to the church and it's up to, to each and every one of us to protect that like the angels do they they try to protect that innocence does that mean the angels fail when kids you know, my kids are being introduced to YouTube. I'm telling you now, they have seen stuff and I've, I've, I've heard them say things that I do not approve of. There's words that they have come out of, the, uh, of, of their mouths that didn't come out of my mouth until I was in my 20s. But yet they have somehow had this stuff come into them. It up on Does that mean that the angel failed? Does it mean that I failed? No, I think again, I think that they, they just bring stuff in. They're not looking for sin. Let me ask you a question. Cliff, if, if, if you sin today as an adult, as a grown man, is it by accident that you sin most of the time or is it because you, you are full aware of what you're doing and you make the decision to do it, right? Children, a lot of times, are introduced right. to sin. That's why, <clears throat> that's why I made that illustration at the beginning about them getting into the school. We're introducing children to hate when right. we start teaching them about race and division Amen. at a young age because they don't know what that is no. we're introducing it to them and therefore we're starting them earlier and earlier and earlier to hate people around them and the angels aren't failing we're being told that we're going to be held accountable but the angels are there to kind of help protect them with this you know it's they're the ones that are going to be going to christ saying listen they were introduced to this stuff you know yeah. and 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 I mean, I don't know. Maybe I, you, I could go down rabbit holes with this all day long. Oh, exactly. And yeah. say, well, then maybe, you know, because children, you know, from all, all you know, accounts that we have here, if a child dies that doesn't understand what, what sin really is, they're not held accountable for their sins, but they still have sin if they've right. been introduced. So at that point, maybe the angels are the ones telling Christ, listen, you See, died for them too, they, and it wasn't their fault. And we're looking. We're reporting to you, Jesus, you know? We're looking at this from the perspective of 2021. Yeah. 
Yeah. This was written the third century. Yeah. What was their perspective of what they were seeing at the time for Jesus to make that statement about the children? Yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to take us to another verse now to muddy the water even more. <laughs> Okay. Because <laughs> that's what I do. All right. Okay. Let's go to uh, to the book of Acts. I love this passage of scripture because this is one of those that um, it, it, we, man, it's, it's such a rich passage. Acts chapter 12. This is a rich chapter because this is, this is the church. They're meeting together. Not only meeting together, they're praying. They're praying for Peter. They're, I mean, there's just a lot going on in this, right? But there's something in this chapter that we read over, and we never give it too much thought. And we're going to stop and give it some thought today, guys. Peter gets out of prison, right? Right. He goes to where the church is meeting. He knows where they're meeting. He knew that they would be meeting. Hmm. One, the church met in the first century. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should still be doing it today. Okay, okay, there, we got that one settled. We should be meeting. Two, he knocks on the door, right? They go, the, who goes to answer the door? Rhoda, right? Rhoda goes and answers the door, sees Peter. Oh, my word. She's so excited. She goes, she interrupts the prayer service. She's like, hey, guys, uh, Peter's out here. What do they tell her? Go to verse 15. What do they say? You're out of your mind. <laughs> and what's the last thing they say? It's his angel. It's his angel angel mm -hmm. how many times have you read that passage of scripture and stopped at that point and said they thought it was his angel what does that mean well, you could go cliff you want to take this one you, you, do. <laughs> <laughs> you could go rabbit holes on this one <laughs> so I, I come to two possible conclusions sure. one well i come to about 102 different conclusions <laughs> well, there's there's the idea that one they were fully accepting of the fact that there was interactions with angels right and it was not abnormal yeah it was not abnormal. for them to say oh it's his angel and not be like is it I mean, think about this if, if today somebody said I saw an angel everyone would run to it right because this is something that oh, oh man I got to see this there's they're still chilling here like it's, it's got to be his angel. Stop interrupting us. Right. Like, how They're commonplace are angels that it's not a big deal? Right. Kind of like that talking donkey thing. Go up, you go, know? Up verse, <laughs> go up to verse 11. <laughs> verse, verse, so verse 11, and when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me the hand of Herod and all the expectation of Jewish people. So an angel is there to, to get him out, right? Right. And, and so... The, the, con the conclusions, the two that I have is one, they think that it is Peter's personal guardian angel right. coming to report on the status of Peter or they think that Peter has died and is now an angel. And is now an angel. Right. One of them is going to be a more sound pattern of doctrine or the other is going to go against what scripture tells us. Yeah. So the only conclusion that makes sound doctrinal sense is that they understood it to be Peter's, angel. Peter's personal, an, an angel that takes account for Peter. Right. <sighs> to <My> me. Brother, <laughs> you, really, you really had to do that, didn't you? I never looked at that before. You know, it, it goes to show you when you read the scriptures and reread the scriptures, you'll always come up with some more insight God will always give you more insight and more wisdom about him. So, it is great if you meditate on his word daily. Like David, David said in the first Psalms, he meditated on God's word daily. And so, you'll learn a lot. I, I've never even looked at that. I know. Yeah. So, to me, that's, that's one of the fascinating things about scripture because it's there the whole time, but we focus so much on, on the event that we don't look at the details. We look at, we look at no, it was a girl interrupting. Right, her. Yeah, right? <laughs> Woo! But, and, 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 but then, all right, so, you know, we, okay, so angel's there, but then I'm thinking to myself, too, they didn't even seem to be that bothered by it. No. Exactly. Oh, it's just his angel. He'll stay there till we See get See if he wants some tea. We're, we're wrapping things up here. <laughs> <laughs> Give 
give us a moment. Give us a moment. <laughs> Good grief. How? So, so in comparison to our own lives, how many times have we been sitting around with one another and we've just said, oh, you know, I'm, this is, man, I, was, I was looked after by an angel today and you don't hear that. Yeah. It, it's not until the moments that we think about things in our past. If we sat here today, and this is neat because I sat down with Bob, Don, Bob, Bob and Louise yesterday and we just started talking about random events yeah. that could only have happened with intervention from God right. in our lives. And when you sit down and you begin to start accounting for the things in your lives that you don't have an answer for, right. you begin to say, holy smokes, man. Yeah. This is incredible. Did I notice at the time that there was something supernatural, something right. divine right. that was happening in my life, or did I just did that really happen? It. Did that really happen? You know, no. we were talking about, like, Bob, they were talking about Louise. She's coming down 281. This is years ago. I'm coming down 281. Her car starts to break down. Busy. It's just she pulls over on the side of the road, and this is one of the, the on-ramps, right? And, and so she pulls over, and her car's dead, and they said just a, a stranger just happened to pull up, stop the car, got out. What's wrong? She said, you know, my car won't start. He put his hands on her engine. Prayed for the engine to start and said, go ahead and start your car. Got in his car and left. <laughs> Cranked right up. Wow. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? Or, and, and that's just one of, right. of, of many times in, in their lives and in, in, in our own lives where we can sit back and say to ourselves, you know, weird things have happened that wasn't of my doing. I never really got information on, on how it happened, but it happened. And then Hebrews tells us to, man, be, you entertain these strangers because you don't know when you're entertaining angels. That's why, man, when, when somebody comes up to me, I don't care who it is. You know, hey, I, I'm thirsty. I need, I need something. I don't have anything on me, but let's go to the gas station and get you something. Ann was laughing the other day. We were talking. She's like, I get so, I get so nervous with Robert because like, at any given time, he's got like a homeless person in his car. <laughs> And she's like, she's like, I remember following him. We were gonna go to lunch one day, and, and he's like, okay, well, I just gotta do some. I gotta run this guy somewhere real quick. And and I was like, you're gonna take him in your car? And Robert's like, yeah. So we get in the car, and so I'm taking him over to, to Eddie's, and all of a sudden he realizes that all of his belongings, you know, is are camped out behind the barber shop. So we do a U-turn in the parking lot and start heading another direction. Anne says, I'm going crazy because I'm like, did he pull a gun on Robert? What's going on? Is everything okay? She's trying to call me. He's not answering his phone. And so then the guy gets out and goes, gets his bag and, you know, we take him back. And she's like, that's just one event. He's always, she goes, it's, 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 it's anxious for me because he's always doing these things. And, and I was like, well, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I know that person in particular is not an angel <laughs> because I, I've heard the way that he talks, <laughs> you know. But you never know when you're going to encounter somebody, sure. and that's just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to refuse somebody something because I don't know if that's part of the test. I don't know. I don't know if it's an, an, an angel that I'm supposed to be entertaining. I just don't know, and so I would rather just be nice to everybody, I guess, or something. And, and, and a lot of people do that, but it was just so it was so commonplace. Right. They didn't, they didn't even think about it. Oh, that's just his angel. It's it's his angel. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, you know, there are things, things that happen in your life. I had one time uh, on, the, on Christmas Eve coming back from Virginia, picked up my son's uh, pickup. He, he wanted us to take the pickup back to our house and in Pleasanton. And then it's when he rebuilt the engine. And uh, I was somewhere in the middle of Arkansas, right outside of Hope, Arkansas, of all places on Interstate 30 and the engine went boom and, uh, and fire was swung out the tailpipe. I mean, real fire. And, uh, and there was an exit right there. And I said, well, it's right in the exit. So I took the exit and Irm Jean's following me in, in our car. And, and uh, she said, there was a lot of fire coming out. And uh, I, pulled a, a, I was able to roll over to a spot where trucks uh, had been blown off. And, and uh, I made it. I said, thank you, God, God right here. And, and it's Christmas Eve. And so I call uh, 
Mr. Rescue, which everybody, that was real popular. You have Mr. Rescue, and I called Mr. Rescue, and the, and the guy didn't understand a word I was saying about where I was. I said, well, I'm at exit uh, so-and-so, uh, right outside the whole parking lot. I do not know where that is. And <laughs> he was in India trying to figure out where I was. I said, well, I, I just need to, I, I, I need to get a record. And, and then I looked in the rear view mirror, and there's a grass fire going on. <laughs> and, and then, of all things, here comes a fire truck going down the exit ramp going the wrong way, and here comes a police car behind him with lights flashing. And I'm trying to talk to this guy to miss rescue, and he doesn't know where I'm at. It's Christmas Eve, and we're, we're hundreds of miles from home. And this guy drives up. <clears throat> he said, "I, I was listening to your conversation uh, on, a, on a, it was monitoring Mr. Rescue, I guess." He says, "I, I own that station over there, and, and uh, I work on Christmas Eve to let my people off." And you know, I heard your conversation. You have a little problem. I said, "Yeah, I have a big problem. I didn't mean to start that fire." He said, "Well, they'll take care of it." Yeah. <laughs> he says. He says, uh, well, let's, what's wrong with your car? I said, it, it, it's my son's, and, and, it, and it, uh, it just stopped, and it blew flames out of the tailpipe. He said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll, uh, I got a friend that has a record, <clears throat> and I'll get him to come over and pick that up and, and take it to the shop, and, and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do about getting it fixed. And so Ermagy and I left the car there and went home, drove all the way home on Christmas Eve, and and this man, just out of the blue, came and, and rescued us. <laughs> and he took the car after it got fixed and took it to his house to wait for David to come get it. And uh, make it a long story short, but he, he didn't want any money for it. Right. And uh, he was a Christian. See, and I, I, think, I think God gives us those opportunities, yeah. I, I, you know, to add... Add, I guess, jewels to the crown, uh, whatever. But but he puts opportunities in your life for right. you to do the right thing. Think of the, you know, the, you know, here you've got the the, the Good Samaritan story. Right. You know, that's an opportunity to do good. Um, are angels involved in that? Don't know. But however, comma, we do get those opportunities presented before us. That's right. You know, picking up, picking up homeless guys and putting them in your car. You know, it's, is is that opportunities to do good? Yes, it is. Do people sometimes freak out about that? Yeah, they do. <laughs> but I, I think, I think we just have to do will the right thing. That? Will that person remember that? Yes, you will. You bet. Jackie, Jackie threw out. You know that uh, scripture is alive and active. You bet it is. Amen. And, and by being alive and active, we constantly have opportunities to prove how alive and active it is in our lives. Robert, you're doing some serious reading over there. That's, you know, that's just because <laughs> this is one of those discussions. That, and, and I mean, we could, we could end it where, where it began. And that's just that this is one of those things that God has not uh, deemed us to completely comprehend and understand. Sure. And and we can try to understand it to a point. We need to understand to the point that angels are real, that they exist, that they have their place. But as far as total revelation as to how they play a part in the spiritual warfare that's going on around us 24 hours a day, I don't think we're we're gonna we're meant to understand it. Right. And and you know I was I was just reading I was reading in Zechariah. Because it's just another one of those things that, you know, it kind of gives us a little bit more insight as to uh, what's told there. You go to Zechariah chapter 1, and uh, it says, beginning verse 7, on the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month uh, Shabbat in the second year of Darius. It goes on, he says, I saw by night, behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow. Behind him were horses, red, soil, and white. Then I said, My Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. Mm -hmm. So they answered the angel of the Lord who stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro throughout the earth, and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. And so it's this idea that, that you know, the angels are 
even out there just on patrol just to give an account for the things that are happening on earth right and continue to yeah to push it up and i, I you know some of these things are it's kind of like man it's just just imagining that, that you may have encounters with with angels and not know it because they're just really just there to take an account of your life what's going on how is, is life disturbing robert at this time is, is how's mike doing right now i'm gonna go check this out and i'm gonna go back and report on it right it doesn't necessarily mean that we're even going to have interaction with them. Right. It could be somebody just passing by us. Sure. Well, you know, and, 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 and to me, that's just fascinating. And, and it doesn't waver. It doesn't cause my faith to shrink right. because I don't have an answer for it. Right. What it does is it makes me more curious about the things that I don't know and the things that are going to be revealed. Right. You know, there are certain things I am positive of, and that is that... that there are angels that are going to be reporting on the things that I do and which are truly embarrassing and shameful. But then there's going to be other times where I'm sure that they're, man, this is your creation, God, and let me tell you what he did today. Right. And, you know, it's the idea. There, there are times, and, and, and I think what we've done, because I, I want us to stay on this topic of guardian angels. I think that, that God within us, it's his creation, has given us wonder and has allowed us to understand that there are things around us that are a presence that we may not know look at all the people that aren't aren't believers but yet they believe in ghosts and they you know i I think that god has given us that ability just as natural beings to sense that there's spiritual things happening right excuse me well think think that we'll let we'll let lonnie silence the (laughs) <laughs> took me back to my days when Love I was phones. doing it's a small world in Disney <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you take, a, take a look at mankind I mean right up until the, the, the turn of the century it was horses Yeah. I mean that's, that's how man got around horses, buggies, Don't carriages me. wagons and then came the invention of the gasoline engine. Look at where we are today. We go from a short span of, of the gasoline engine to the 1960s going to the moon. I mean, how huge of a leap was that? And that was the curiosity, mm-hmm. that was the innovation that God put within us. And, and I, I think that got us to where we are today but there are things that go back to what you said just a moment ago how many times within the pages of scripture does it say that God sent forth his angel mm-hmm. right. or an angel of the Lord yeah. right. these are God's possession quote unquote I think those going back to Deuteronomy 29 29 the secret things of the world belong to God I think there are things that that will be revealed to us in this lifetime, but I also think that there's a lot of things that won't. Why? Because it's not pertinent to salvation. When Christ said, I came to seek and save that which was lost, it was the the scripture putting it in context of what he was saying there. Mm -hmm. Seek and save that which was lost, the innocence of mankind had been robbed and God finally said enough's enough son it's time for you to go down to earth we've got to bring back our creation to us and that I think is exactly what all this is about and if we get too deep into the weeds I think we'll miss what God's trying to say yeah true yeah you know it's just like we go back to Hebrews the first chapter in verse 13 and 14. To which of the angels did God say, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies footstool for your feet? He's talking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Ministering servants sent God sent them to serve those who will inherit salvation. So 
That's pretty deep. Yeah. Do we understand uh, fully what that means? No. But God sent them. They're ministering spirits. We don't we don't know what they're ministering, but we know that we have we have that guardian angel that reports what we're doing and what we're not doing. I guess. I mean, you go back to to Matthew. It's it's like, okay, God gives us that angel as a child. Right. Age of accountability comes along. Does that angel? Okay, he's done See now. Done now. See ya. He's I'm fucking out. That's right. Got to go you check in somebody me else. This guy, really. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those memes or something? It's got like an angel's flat on his face, and it's like my guardian angel after a, after a day shift with me. <laughs> like, well, and, and what I was thinking about whenever you're saying about you know going to and fro, it reminded me of in Job, where at chapter one verse six it says, right. "One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from?'" Satan answered the Lord from roaming through the, throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. And then that's when the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Right. And then he says, And then, Has he not, have you not yeah, put the hedge around him? Yeah. I can't even touch him. So that well, goes to show that greenery is such a good. Uh, that, that, and, then, and then you take that, take that to Galatians, right? Yeah. Because again, yeah. they understood what this was. What did Paul warn the Galatians church? That if, if we were an angel, or an, an angel, angel present any other gospel and so angels again commonplace but they recognize it and I don't want this is where I think that maybe we, we have to kind of get out of here a little bit because um, we've made the comment before and we joked a little bit last week we have to be careful not to, to put a person at, at, at as the label of what is evil right I may not agree with with somebody but that doesn't mean that they're evil they're under the influence of an angel what God created of something, right? right? And so, um, when you when you talk about you know Satan saying, "I just went to and fro," we have to understand Satan is an angel. There were angels that fell with him, and and Satan has angels that are out to influence you too. We're, we're actually told that he presents himself as what angel. an angel, angel of light. Okay, and so then Paul says, "Be careful of angels introducing this stuff too, because it's going to look like it's good. It's going to look like it's from God, right. but it's, it's not." not. Right. And so, well, right. it, 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 and so there, we also know that while we're here on Earth, our position is lower than the angels. They're much more powerful than we are. When we go to eternity, however, we get we get the promotion, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it's understanding too. That, that these angels that we're dealing with, you know, they're able to influence and infiltrate good and or bad. And so we need to be aware that there's good angels and bad angels. That's why we're told to test the spirits because spirits and angels can sometimes be synonymous in scripture right. with one another. And so basically what, what, what I look at is, okay, putting this within the context of Ephesians chapter six, we are sitting here in this building right now and we are focused on the armor of God Right. We are girding ourselves. We're, we're preparing for battle. We are battling right now, even though we're, we're not physically fighting. But then I, I, I say, okay, well, we're here doing this, but around us, there's a spiritual battle that's going on that we don't even see. Right. Some of it we do. Some of it comes through television. Some of it comes through world leaders. Some of it comes through actors, music. Some of it comes from our own family. We see that part of the spiritual warfare, but there's so much going on around us that we don't see. And so we're reminded, right. test everything. And this is the answer key. That's the standard. Your answer this is how you, you combat it. Right. Because you're not strong enough to do it on your own right now. Right. So I'm going to give angels to fight over the things that you can't control. But the things that you can control, I'm going to give you the tool to be able to take care of it. That's our protection. And so it's just, you know, you, you make comments sometimes, and Robert and I'll be talking, he'll say, I, I, I get scared in calm waters mm -hmm. because it's when I can't see the waves that I've let down my guard. How many times in our lives do we just feel like we're not under attack so maybe we're where we need to be? Look at all the people in the world that, that just think they're okay with God because they have this belief in him 
and these angels of darkness will have them believe that and they'll present this as light to them and they'll say, hey, everything's going your way. God loves you. You're at peace. We're going to even let you have a prosperous life and everything is going great. And so they don't question anything because the waters are calm. Yeah. Robert says, I'd much rather be in the stormy waters. I'd much rather be in the middle of the fight because that way at least I know what I'm up against. Right. And so I think from that perspective, even in times in our lives, when things are kind of calm, and rather than looking at it that way, saying, okay, well, it's calm here on the surface, but I need to keep my eyes on below the water, up to the sky, because somewhere there's something going on that I need to be aware of. When you, you, know? when you talked about the calm water, the Titanic was on the movie the other day. Yeah. yeah. And it was exa- that part where they were like, it was so, so calm. calm yeah. So and so they they knew that the report had been there that there was there was icebergs in the area. There's no water splashing. But there was no water spot, and it was so calm. And and before and at night, before they by the time that they saw it, they they were going so fast and could not turn quick enough to totally avoid it. And and they had also made the incorrect assumption that it was an unsinkable ship. Yeah. Because, you know, with it, the way that it actually did it, I mean, it was great engineering for the time, but it just, you know, it just goes to show you that nothing is totally foolproof yeah. as far as cre- what we create yeah. and stuff. And so you got to keep that in mind, you know, like it's, if, you know, you may see this much, but down below it's so much. It's lot, yeah. huge, you know. It's huge. Yeah. You know, th- this is, again, this is a subject that, I mean, I th- we, could, we could devote the rest of our lives to studying it, and we never would yeah. truly fully understand it, and I don't think we're meant to. No. I, think it's, I think God wants us to know that it's there. It's there. there. Yeah. It's Good and taking bad. Care of it. Yeah. And again, it's almost like revelation. I don't think we're supposed <laughs> to truly ever truly understand it, but just know that we win. We win. You know, if you can keep your eye on that, don't get distracted by the things you don't understand because one day it's going to be revealed to you all you need to do is trust me and i know that there's angels there's angels of darkness but i put angels of light out there too. <coughs> be careful because the angels of darkness can hide, can <coughs> can camouflage themselves as light so use your scripture i've given you this so we won't become complacent yeah, yeah. and i've yeah. given you everything you need right. to combat it right for for life and godliness um I'm going to, you know, I, I think I'll stop it. And then again, you know, there may be people that are watching that are like, man, well, you didn't even get into this. But that's just because, again, like I said, this is one of those topics that we could just continue to go down. We'll never hit never. No. everything. And, and, I mean, because you could read one passage of Scripture and go down so many rabbit holes. But I think that's the point is, is, again, is just know that God has placed them there and they have a purpose in our lives. And, and for so long, I think, you know, we have run from it. Or try to pretend like it doesn't. I think that, man, I'm, I'm not going to speak for everybody. I can speak from my experience. And my experience has been that there are certain things growing up that we don't want to associate ourselves with. Because if we do, people might think that we belong to a specific sect or group. And so because of that, we're just not going to talk about it. Okay? Angels is one of them. I don't hear a lot of people in, in my circle of friends in my life really talking about angels that much. Because... You know, we don't know much about it, and so you know, we don't want to confuse ourselves and let other people think that we believe that. But why not talk about these things, you know? Again, I'm not going to pretend like I know everything, because I don't. Right. I'm not afraid to talk about the things I don't know about. But what I do know is that God is my creator. He created the earth. He created the angels. He gave us Christ. He gave us angels to watch over us. Satan is trying to pull us away, but because of Christ, I don't have to fear Satan. I just have to be on the watch out right. for him. But I have everything I need in the church, in the scripture, and in, and in Christ to combat everything. And that gives me strength. It gives me hope. And man, I'm, I'm not afraid to talk about anything because at the end of the day, I know that because it, it's in here. Well, I mean, you, go ahead. I was going to say, if... We know that it's in there, and we've seen reference, and we've talked about that. But if sometimes, if you try to expound on that, it just becomes speculation. Yeah. Right. And then that, I think, when that Mike's happens, water, you know, it's not like a, you know, turn to First Mike chapter one. You know, yeah. I'm not in. You know, so whatever it may be, an educated guess. It may be something that maybe God's placed on your heart or something, or, or maybe revealed. But it, you know, I think, you know, going back to the mystery of it, you know, that 
it's kind of back to the present analogy. You know, whenever you're a kid, you know, of course, when you're an adult, you buy them or whatever, you know, a lot of the gifts that you get. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, when you see that present there, there's such a mystery and awe because you don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be that you're not excited by what's inside of it, but, you know, it's it's still that, I wonder what it is. Yeah, it can be anything. You know, what well, certain size, is, it, is that the size of it? Is it bigger? You know, is it smaller inside there? Mm -hmm. You know, or whatever. And so, you know, you have that. doesn't mean that you're not excited to get it or that you won't use it or if it's something that you really want. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just that mystery on there. So that once you find that out, that's gone. And I think that kind of correlates whenever you're a child. You know, you've, you've all these things, like the world is like a big mysterious place, you know, like because you know, your parents know you can't do that. Well, why can't I? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that kind of thing. And they, even if you tell them they, don't, they can't formulate still why, you can give them the excuse, but that at the end of the day, they don't really know unless you say that could hurt mm -hmm. you. Or right. whatever. And, and right. look at the gift that comes from it. Oh, if, yeah. if we challenged ourselves to look at the, this life mm -hmm. as a wonderful mystery, right. yeah, rather than a sentence of pain and suffering, yeah. right. why must I go through this? <laughs> look at look at the outcomes of the two. If I choose to wake up and say, "Man, God, you have given me another day in this wonderful mystery of life. I don't know what's going to happen now. I don't know what beauty I'm going to find. I don't know what pain I'm going to endure." Right but I'm going to endure it, and it's a mystery, and it's wonderful. I think it's perspective. I think that's where faith comes into it. I think that that's the attitude we have to have. I think this attitude God wants us to have yeah. and saying that, you know, man, I, I got you. I think, I think, <laughs> think of it, a closing thought here. Think about it this way. You look at the scripture in Matthew where Jesus says, they're angels, angels of them, talking about the children. Mm -hmm. What did the world say? Oh, pfft. He's just playing with his imaginary friend. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> you know, I think one of the things we take away from this is what you brought up in Acts. And I, I never looked at it that way. And, uh, you know, I've always looked at, I've always looked at uh, Hebrews, the, 14th, the first chapter, verse 14. But when I'm talking about, uh, they're talking about Peter's angel, and you read all about what went on before that. That's right. You know, and the angel Peter thought he was dreaming. dreaming yeah. But yeah. you know, the thing about it is that, that, that when you get into the Word, you read what God has given us. What a tremendous gift we have here. You know, it's talking about when you're first baptized, you don't know a whole lot. You know that you want to believe. You want to believe that Jesus is your Savior, and that you want to have a hope of everlasting life. But how do you live that life? It's right here. That's right. God gave us through His Word, through the Holy Spirit, the guidelines, yeah. the gift. It's a gift. And think about this: How many years you've been reading the Scripture, Lenny? A lot, and I never, I never looked at that. See, see, yeah. and Acts. See, here it is you today. What you did, Lonnie got something new. <laughs> that's. I think that's why it's still relevant, no matter. Yes. Because, that's why it's living and active. Because you're. You change, but the word doesn't. No. And so, yeah. you know, as as my age, when I look at it, I see something different than I did as a teenager. And as as an uh, as I get older, when I get to be as old as Lonnie, <laughs> you know, I look at it. I may, may you know, have a different thing. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be if the Lord lets us live, I'll, I'll be turning the big old eight over <laughs> this year. We're gonna uh, have to help you down the stairs. <laughs> You're gonna have to help me down the stairs and up the stairs. All right, Mike, will you close us in prayer, buddy? Sure. Dearly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity we have, Lord, to meet together, to study, Lord, your creation, Lord, the angels that you've, you've created, Lord, the, the roles that they have, Lord, and the, the supreme beings that they are, Lord. We know that they have a purpose, Lord, that they, that they report to you and that the, the things that they do, Lord, are, are important, Lord. Help us to, to realize that. Help us to know, Lord, that your word is full of mysteries and, and things, Lord, that we can take from that and that, that Lord, that you uh, love us and that you've given us all that we need to, to be able to um, be on this earth and to overcome uh, the enemy, Lord. And uh, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for for all the gifts that you've given us, all the insights, Lord. Thank you for this venue that we have, Lord, to be able to come together 
to study a, a, a portion of your word, Lord, on different subjects and present that, Lord, online. It's our hope and our prayer that the things that we talk about, Lord, are, come from you, Lord. The insights that we have are from you. And then we look at things, Lord, in a, maybe a different way than we have and, and uh, you know, study deeper, Lord, and, and take away things, Lord, that we can apply in our lives. Lord, be with those that are able to watch, be with those that weren't able to for whatever reason. Lord, thank you for Cliff being here this morning, Lord. Um, be with Mike, Lord, and, and all the things that are going on in his life. And we just ask that you continue to watch over us, Lord. Help us to, to be here tomorrow, Lord, to be able to worship you in, in the spirit and truth, Lord. And be with us today as we depart. It's through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Cliff, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Uh, man, we love being here. This is a highlight of the week. And uh, we invite you to come tomorrow to join us for worship. Uh, if you're in the area, if you just want to watch online, wherever you're at, we, we want you to be here, be excited about God, and worship with us. We have Bible study at 9.30, worship at 10.30, tomorrow evening at uh, uh, 6. We also have our fellowship meal tomorrow, so come visit with us and get fed spiritually and physically. Um, tonight, we have our movie in the park. Um, we'll get things going probably around 5 o'clock with, um, I think I'm going to show Prince of Egypt around then and then um, um, at seven we'll be showing either courageous or um, uh, is it breakthrough the ice one? Oh yeah so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm haven't decided yet I'm taking a poll um, but join us for that and then Wednesdays for our week midweek Bible study at seven love you guys appreciate you <laughs> Sorry, I, made, I made fun of Lonnie's oh, age fine. here and my hip started hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quarreling. What was that? What, who was that that was quarreling Jacob. with the, yeah, Jacob. the angel? What's, it was an angel, right? Or yeah, was it? he touched the socket of his hip and he yeah, it was from, like, ow. lived from then on. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.